let's break this down and figure it out together. Let me change the high cut, highlighter color. So we have our dividend right here. That is the number that's gonna be divided. And our seven is our divisor, which is the number that, okay, we're gonna break this number down into seven groups. So let's put it into a long division problem because that's what works for us. So I'm going to place 2,530 in my little house. And I'm going to start working on long division for that. So the first thing I need to do is, see, does seven go into two? Well, we already know that it doesn't. So let's just automatically put a zero there. And I want you guys to notice that I'm putting a gray zero because it means you can put a zero or you can just leave it blank. So now we're looking at how many times does seven go into 25? So what I need to do here is know my seven facts. So I know that seven times two is 14. I know that seven times three is 21, and seven times four is 28, but 28 is more than 25, so that automatically just doesn't work. So I'm going to use this three. So I'm gonna say seven times three is equal to 21. So I'll put that 21 underneath here, and I'm gonna subtract. So we're going to be subtracting 5 minus 1 is 4, and 2 minus 2 is 0. And I'm going to make that 0 gray again because you can either choose to leave it empty or to put a 0 based on what makes you comfortable. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down this 3. So now instead of a 4, I have 43. So now we're looking at how many times does this seven go into 43? So what I need to know is my math facts. I know that seven times five is 35. Let me see seven times six. Seven times six is 42, which is just one under 43. So I'm gonna use that. That's going to be my guide today. So I don't need the seven times five. I'm going to do seven times six. Seven times six is 42. And now I'm gonna subtract that. So seven times six is 42. And I don't need this anymore. So 43 minus 42 is one. And remember, if it makes you guys feel comfortable, you can use your zeros and put them right here, or you can just choose not to. So that's why I'm putting them in gray. The next thing I have to do is I have to bring this zero down. And instead of a one, it becomes 10. So how many times does seven go into this 10? Well, I know it's not gonna be two because seven times two equals 14. That's too much, it won't work. So I'm going to do seven times one because I know that seven times one equals seven. So let's do seven times one is equal to seven, and I'm going to subtract. I know that 10 minus seven is equal to three, but I want you guys to notice something. This seven is more than this three. So that's my indicator to know that, okay, this three over here is going to be my remainder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to Make it travel all the way up here. Boop, boop, boop. And it's gonna become remainder three. So this is your answer. And I want you guys to make sure that you're taking notes along with me. These are things that are going to help you on your test. And they're gonna help you be successful because we're gonna let you use your notes during your test. And they'll help you during your assignment as well. So then 
let's do a practice assignment. So let's read this together. We have Margaret has $1,874 to buy sets of books for each class. If each set of books costs $36, how many sets can Margaret buy? Well, remember how we were talking about our three reads? That the first thing that we had to do is, what is the situation? The second read was, what are the quantities or numbers? And then the third read, we were going to do, what is the question asking? So what is the question? So if we're going to do our three reads... Let's start with, what is our situation? Our situation is that Margaret wants to buy sets of books for each class. So then I want to know the quantities. Well, I know that she has $1,874, and if each set of books costs 36 I know that I'm going to be using those two to figure it out. And then what the question is asking it's asking how many sets can Margaret buy? That's our third read, is what is the question? So this is what we're going to be doing. The first thing that I want you guys to do, it's let's, let's translate this into an equation. So if Margaret has 1,874 dollars, and what she has to do is she wants to buy textbooks. She wants to buy sets of books for each class. Each set is 36. So now we have to figure out how many sets she can buy with $1,874. So this would be the equation that we want to use. It could also look like this. It could be... 1,874 divided by 36. If you're typing, this is the other way it could look. Divided by 36. But we've been learning about how to estimate. So it's asking to use compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers that we can easily do the math in our head. So we're taking... 1,874, and here it's telling us, hey, switch it to 2,000 because it's close enough, right? So that becomes that. And this 36, it's asking us to switch it to 40 because it's close enough. And we can do this math in our head. If I got rid of these zeros, I want to know how many times can 4... What can I multiply times 4 to get 200? Well, we know that 4 times 5 equals 20. What about 4 times 50? That's equal to 200 because we're just adding the extra 0. So now let's check with our original problem, which is... That. So 40 times what equals 2,000? So can I say 40 times 20? I Not 20, sorry. 40 times 50? I already know that 4 times 5 is 20. So 4 times 5 is 20. And then I'm going to add these two zeros. Is that 2,000? Yeah, it's the same. So now let's move on to part B of this question. We're still working with Margaret and her $1,874. And each set of class books is 36. So now we know that we're going to use a 5 in order to put right here. So it says divide the tens. Think. 187 tens are shared amongst 36 groups. So it's telling us, okay, put the 5 right here, which it is. So I, we know that each 
group is getting five tens, which is also known as 50. See? Matches up. So it's asking us 36 times 5 is 180. Well, 36 times 5 tens is 180 tens. So 1,800. So now we have to subtract this. Now we have to subtract 1,800. 70, 10,000, sorry, 1,870 minus 1,800. That leaves us with 70, okay? Now we're bringing down the 4 over here. It leaves us with 74. Now we need to find out how many times does 36 times what equals 74. Okay. So that's when we move on to the next part of our step. We have to divide the ones. We already did our we already did our fives. So we said that 36 times 5 is going to be 180. And then we subtracted and we got 74 because we brought this 4 down. Right? Right here. And now we want to figure out how many times 36 times what equals 74. So let's try 36 times 2. I know that 6 times 2 is 12. I'm going to carry over the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Carry over the 1. It's 72. That's close enough, right? It's not over. And if I added another 36, it would be too much. So we're going to put the 2 right there and it becomes 72. So then what happens is that we have this two left over, which becomes our remainder. So that means that each group is going to get 52 ones. So now let's go to the next step. It's asking what is the quotient? Remember what a quotient is? It's just the answer to a division problem. What is the remainder? This is this dude right here. Now it's asking us to complete this sentence. We know the quotient is 52, that's the answer, with two left over. Now it's asking, is the answer reasonable? Why or why not? Complete the sentence. It says, the, I would say the answer is reasonable. Oh. I would say the answer is reasonable because it is close to the estimate of 1,800. Remember how we did that up here with our compatible numbers? Okay, so now let's keep checking. So now I want you guys to look at, this is going to be your assignment for today. You're going to be completing the same thing step by step. So I want to see you guys reading the first question. So what you're going to be doing is using strategies to complete step by step. This is the question, and it's broken down to you in part A, B, C, D, just like we did it. And you're going to be doing the same thing and step it out. It's the question that you have right here about Lana's shirt. And then you're going to break it down into compatible numbers. Then you'll divide the tens, then divide the ones, and then find out how much. After that, it's not going to give you the step breakdowns anymore. But you are going to be breaking it down by steps. So let's go over this step it out together. So let's read it. Lana makes clothes for her online store. She makes 19 shirts from a large roll of fabric. Each roll has 610 inches of fabric. How many inches of fabric from the roll does Lana use for each, each shirt? Okay. 